Okay, so we're going to work on growth and decay models in 6.2. And all of growth and decay models are kind of actually based off of the phrase, the rate of change of y is proportional to the value of y. And, uh, it, you know, you, you might not even remotely recognize it, but that's kind of what actually all of the exponential growth and exponential decay models are based off of. And this is, this is how you write it as an equation. So the rate of change of y, so this is essentially y prime, is proportional to the value of y. Now, if you, if you remember back from LH2 and pre-calc, if you did direct proportionality, so directly proportional means you multiply. So that's why the y is being multiplied. And then there's always going to be a constant that you don't know yet that you have to figure out. So if we write it out as an equation, it's dy dt equals ky. And that's going to be referred to as a differential equation because it's a derivative. And if we want to solve differential equations, we essentially are going to do it as, as how we always have. So we're going to take the or integrate it. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to um, how should I say this? My goal is to be to integrate both sides. Um, but the way that it's currently set up, we can't do that. So in section three, we're actually going to learn something called separation of variables, which is just what you have to do at the beginning of a differential equation so that you're able to do it. So on this particular equation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by dt and I'm going to divide both sides by y. And then that is going to give me dy divided by y is equal to k times dt. And, you know, this might even look worse to you for now, but it, it actually works better for us. Because if we integrate both sides the way this currently sits, we're able to do that because all of the information over here is all in terms of y, and all the information over here is in terms of t. Now, uh, integrating derivative over original, or if I wanted to rewrite it, I could write it as y to the negative 1. But what we've done quite a bit of so far is if you integrate this form, you're going to get natural log. And if we integrate the right-hand side, k is just a number multiplier. So this is essentially like us integrating 1 dt, which would become t. And then your multiplier of k follows with it. So it's going to become kt. And then we could write a plus c on both sides, but we don't traditionally do that. We usually combine them together into a single c. And uh, our goal, if we can, is to solve for y. So if I were to go about trying to solve this for y, uh, I'm actually going to have to put it into exponential form because currently I'm trying to solve for something inside of a logarithm. So this is the same thing as log base e, which you don't necessarily have to write it. You can think it. And if I want to solve or get the y out of log form, I'm going to put it into exponential form, which would be e to the kt plus c power equals absolute value of y. Yo. So this is all the power currently right now. And uh, this next little bit of trickery is, is kind of something that, you know, each year kind of throws some people off. And, and I wish we could be in person to, to go over this and, and answer questions with it. But what we're going to do is instead of me writing plus in the exponent, I'm going to write times e to the c. So this is basically backwards from what we traditionally will do. Normally, if we have two of the same base, we put them together and add the powers. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is to make it actually slightly less complicated. Uh, e to the c power 
is very similar to what we've done in the past when any numerical operations on C, it just kind of absorbs it. So E to the C is just going to turn into C. So I'm going to write this as C times E to the KT. And then if I want to remove an absolute value symbol, removing an absolute value symbol would create a plus or a minus right here. But since it's on a C and C is a number that we need to find anyway, C basically could be positive or negative. Um, so we kind of just remove the absolute value symbol, put plus or minus, C absorbs it, and we get this. Now, the other portion of the absolute value symbol that we don't really even need to worry about um, is in, in the definition of this differential equation. You're actually told that Y is going to be positive. So we kind of ignore the rest of that part about the absolute value, to be honest. And what we end up with is this. So this is going to be a general solution to every single exponential growth or decay model. So anytime, anytime we have a problem that starts off with the phrase, the rate of change of Y is proportional to Y, we can immediately start with this, because this is the general solution to that differential equation. You are not going to need to show this work and to verify or prove that every time. If you are given that phrase, and we know it's exponential or uh, exponential growth or decay, we're able to start with this to immediately, this general solution. And you'll get quite a few problems that are set up like that. So right here, we've got the rate of change of y is proportional to y. When t equals 0, y equals 2. And when t equals 2, y equals 4. What is the value of y when t equals 3? And, uh, you know, I, I get it from your viewpoint that this just seems flat out confusing because it doesn't necessarily immediately jump out at you how to do this. Um, they just give you a bunch of numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the fact that it says the rate of change of y is proportional to y. Me reading that sentence means that I know I can immediately start with y equals ce to the kt. So we have a general solution. The issue with this general solution is that you have two constant values that need to be discovered or found out um, to be able to kind of be a particular solution. So the reason this problem gives you a whole bunch of numbers is you need to use these first two sets of numbers to figure out C and K. And then once you do that, it's a particular solution that fits this set of data perfectly. And then the actual question at the end says, what is the value of Y when T is three? Then it's easy to do. But there's definitely work to before getting to that point. So we'll start with the first set of numbers. So it says t is 0, y is 2. Well, t is similar to the x in this case. So this is, this is like the point 0, 2. So if I have the point 0, 2, I'm going to have 2 equals c e to the k times 0. Well, k times 0 is 0 e to the 0 is 1, so I end up with c times 1, which is just c. What you're going to find is that if one of your points is the initial value, so at time 0, if you have one of the points at time 0, it's actually usually really helpful because you can immediately find c right away. I mean, you don't have to have this, but it's, it's helpful. So once we figured out C, well, then we move kind of on to like stage two, I guess we want to call that. So we're going to put the two into the equation. So the equation no longer is Y equals C E to the KT. We can refine it now. And now our equation is down to Y equals two E to the KT. And then we're going to take our next set of numbers to try to figure out K. So our next set of numbers is the point 2, 4. So 
So I've got 4 equals 2e to the k times 2. And I'm going to go through the work of trying to solve for k. So divide both sides by 2. And I need to solve for a variable. So the way that you guys were taught previously is to take the natural log of both sides. So we'll do that. Um, natural log of e to the 2k. The whole reason we do this is so that this exponent can move out front. ln of e is 1. So I need to do ln of 2 divided by 2. On my calculator, when I do that, I get about 0.347. Well, so, so far, we've figured out C, and now we've figured out K. Um, we kind of moved to stage 3. So now we actually have a particular solution, because our equation is Y equals 2E to the about 0.347 t. Oh, that was a terrible 7. And then we were able to answer our last question. So our last question is, what is y when t is 3? Well, and if you want, I can even write the point. Uh, 3, question mark. So y equals 2e to the 0.347t. Now here's where you'll end up making mistakes on the AP test. So the AP test says that you need to be accurate up to three decimal points. Um, the issue is back here when we rounded 0.347 to three decimal points, it actually was enough of a round that it throws this answer off quite a bit. So what you're going to want to do when you're using your calculator, because this one's definitely a calculator question, is you want to type in ln of 2 divided by 2 on your calculator and leave this decimal kind of stored on there. So this was the last thing I typed in my calculator. On your calculator, there's a button that says ANS. It's near the bottom. And what that is, is it's your calculator reciting the previous answer. So you are going to want to use that answer button rather than typing in 0.347. If I do that, I get y is equal to, where is it, um, 5.657. And if you go back through and recalculate this and put in 0.347, um, I believe this ended up being 5.668 or something like that, but it ended up being quite different. So if you're doing the AP test and you want your final answer to be accurate to three decimal points, you, you kind of have two options. One is during the problem, don't be accurate to three decimal points, be accurate to much more, like six or seven. And then that way, your answer at the end would be accurate to three decimal places. It's kind of somewhat like sig figs from chemistry, is you want to have your work throughout the problem be much more accurate so that your final answer is accurate to three decimal places. OK, let's try another one. And, and if I were you, I guess what I would recommend is to try to pause the video and see if you can do this one on your own. Let's see if I can scroll a little better. Nope. Let's pause the video. See if you can do this one on your own first and try to figure out the final answer. And then, you know, I'll work it out with you here when you come back. Okay. So the fact that it starts off with a sentence, the rate of change of y is proportional to y means I'm going to start off with y equals ce to the kt. And then I need to find both of these constants. 
finding two different constants requires two different sets of data. And then, then it would be called a particular solution. And then I can use my particular solution to actually find the question at the end. So first piece of information I'm told is the point 0, 04. So I'll plug that in. And again, e to the k times 0 is e to the 0, which is 1. So I find my c value right away. Once I have c, well, then that kind of refines my equation. It's no longer y equals c e to the kt. My equation is now y equals 4 e to the kt. So it's not a particular solution yet because there's still a k in it, but it's just more of an accurate solution to fit my information. And I'm going to use my second piece of data to find k. So my second piece of data is the point 5, 1 half. And then this is going to give me 1 half equals 4e to the k times 5. Well, my goal is to solve for the exponent, so I need to get e to the power by itself. So divide both sides by 4. And then I'm going to have 1 eighth equals e to the 5k. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides to solve for an exponent. Um, this will become 5k times ln of e, which is just 5k. <clears throat> so ln of 1 eighth divided by 5 is going to be approximately negative uh, 0.416. And then I found my k value, my second constant. So I'm going to rewrite my equation as y equals 4e to the negative 0.416t. <clears throat> and then from this, I'm asked, what is y when t is 3? OK, well, now I'm just going to plug 3 in place of t, and I should be able to get a number answer for y. And similar to before, when I'm actually calculating this, I don't want to use negative 0.416. I either want a, you know, six or seven decimal places, or on the calculator, I'm going to use the previous answer button times three. And then that would give me 1.149. And then that way, my final answer is accurate to three decimal places. Okay, excellent. There's part one of the section.